everyone and welcome back to another Facebook Live with the Environmental Learning Centers of Connecticut. My name is Lauren Pryor, one of our teacher naturalists here, and today, since it's a little snowy outside, uh, we are inside, but I did uh, bring a special guest that we're going to meet and learn the natural history of today. So typically this animal you can see at our Barnes Nature Center. Um, right now the Nature Center building is closed, but you can uh, go to the trails. The trails, um, we have a little over uh, 60 acres of trails. Um, the trails are open sunrise to sunset, seven days a week, so you can take a hike by yourself with your family, with your friends. Um, and you can see an animal like this out there on the trails if you have a very good eye. Uh, but since we're not at the Barnes Nature Center today, we are at Indian Rock. I have our guest with us here today next to me. So I would like everyone to say good morning and I would like to introduce Kira, our Eastern Screech Owl. So East, this is an Eastern Screech Owl. She is the red morph. They also come in the gray morph. Um, but she is a native bird to Connecticut. Um, so right now we have her at the Indian Rock and one of our temporary aviaries, um, but typically sh you can visit her at the Barnes Na Nature Center. But the Eastern Screech Owl, we're going to learn uh, four key clues to IDing this animal. So whenever you see wild birds, there are four questions you can ask yourself. There are four questions you can ask yourself if you need to ID a bird. So we're going to learn what those four questions are. And I'm going to get her on the glove so we can take a closer look. Step up. Step up. Okay. So our Eastern Screech Owl Kira. So four key clues to IDing a bird. First, you want to think about what shape and what size the animal is. So, take a close look at her back feathers. If we're thinking size, Kira is small. She is an adult. This is about as big as they get. Robin, American Robin size, about half a pound. Females are a little bit, little bit heavier than males. So when we're IDing a bird, we want to think shape and size. So like I said, an American Robin. Shape, she's kind of stocky. The tail, very square. Rounded wings. Covered in feathers, this is a bird, so she does have feathers. Feathers enabling her to fly and to keep warm and dry. The feathers on the owl's wings are shaped pretty uniquely to allow her to fly silently. Owls have silent flight in order to seek and capture their prey. We're gonna talk about the prey that this animal eats in just a little bit. As Kira is turning her head around, I just want to debunk one common myth that owls can turn their uh, heads all the way around. They cannot turn their heads all the way around, but they come pretty close. So once we have the shape and size down, small owl, stocky, round wings, square tail, very round head, we're going to think of the colors. So what color is this animal? She is considered the red morph of the eastern screech owl. But we see lots of brown, she's kind of orangey browns, blacks, and white.
this coloration and the pattern of her colors, especially on her chest here, is very important. It's a significant for camouflage, blending into her environment. So Kira, uh, we're going to see screech owls as frequent visitors of um, both types of forests, deciduous and coniferous forests, forests or mixed forests. But that pattern on her chest, the colors, are going to help her camouflage. So these animals, they love to hang out in trees. So that pattern is going to help her camouflage right up against the bark. Camouflage is really important in this case of the eastern screech owl because they are a predator and they are prey. So they've got to play that game of hide and seek on both sides. Predators of the eastern screech owl are going to be larger birds, so bigger hawks, bigger owls. But prey, uh, these guys eat small mammals. If they can catch them, small bats, sometimes even insects. And to eat, she's going to use her talons. So she does have talons. To grasp her food, she's going to bring it back to maybe um, a tree cavity to store it or onto a branch to eat it. And she does have a beak, a hooked beak. We can see there the side of her face that she's going to use to rip and tear her food. So these are meat eaters. In captivity here we do feed her small mice. So we've got the shape and size down. We've got the color down. The next question we're going to have to ask ourselves, question number three, is the habitat. Where does this animal live? So I kind of mentioned already that this animal lives in forests. They're going to stay away from areas that don't have a lot of tree cover. So not really in open fields. You might find them on the boundary of a forest and field or heading into the forest. They do like their water features, so heading towards water is a good place to look. Uh, as she's looking at the camera, you can see she's got those huge yellow eyes. That's another color that you want to look out for the eastern screech owl. So if they've got the red morph, you, you, they come in gray, but they do have yellow eyes. You can see that yellow eye. Okay, so we've got shape and size, we've got color, we've got habitat. The fourth question you need to ask yourself when you're IDing a bird is their behavior. So being an owl, they are nocturnal. Nocturnal meaning they are active at night. Kira here is just awake because I woke her up so she could join us today. But owls are active at night. That's when they're primarily searching for their food. That's when they're going to be courting each other. And screech owls, the mating season is coming up. They're going to be starting in May, March um, through April, some, uh, even going through May. They're going to be courting each other. They make their nests in cavities. These are cavity nesters. So this little owl they're not going to make their own cavity, a hole in a tree. They're going to kind of take over a hole that might have been started from a woodpecker. So an old woodpecker kind of food spot, an old woodpecker nest. They're going to kind of take over that hole in the tree. And they're not really going to add anything to their nest. The female is just going to use whatever is there. So if there is any kind of soft 
broken wood chips at the, bar the bottom of that cavity, if there's any lichen growing or any moss, whatever is there is there for her. And she's going to make a nice little dent with her body, and that's where she'll lay her eggs. She might lay two, three, or four eggs. It's going to be one brood for the season. And it'll take about a month for those eggs to hatch and about another month before those birds fledge and start to leave the nest. We've got lots of sights and sounds in this room. We're in one of the lab rooms on the Indian Rock Nature Preserve with all of our reptiles and amphibians in it. So she's taking a look around. We have one of our green frogs making noise right now that she's hearing. The eastern screech owls, they do make their own noise. It can kind of be a whinny noise. I like a horse whinny. but it will be at night. Remember, these guys are active at night. Kira is a wild screech owl. She was not born in captivity, but she came to live in captivity as an adult. So Kira here, she went through a process called wildlife rehabilitation and she was deemed non-releasable so she is now a permanent resident with us at the environmental learning centers of connecticut and she was deemed non-releasable because she became too she became too reliable on people so she did not learn the skills that she would have needed to survive on her own. So skills like finding her food, the appropriate cavity shelter, and of course her water. So in captivity, we provide that for her. A good question, Debbie Wood. Uh, she is beautiful with those big yellow eyes. Um, her call sound kind of sounds like a horse whinny. We'll see if we can turn her face towards the camera. So we can look at her facial disc. So you can kind of see on the side of her face, behind her eye, she's got this dark brown line. She's switching her head back and forth. But it's this dark brown line behind her eye, kind of going towards the top of her head down to the bottom of her head, on both sides of her face. So that's called a facial disc, so, so when she's hunting her prey out at night and she's listening really hard that helps bring in sound, toward, sound towards her ears. You can see she's kind of got these feathers at the top of that brown line poking out. They look like ears, kind of coming like this. They are not ears. Owls don't have a, um, a pinna like us. They don't have a fleshy external ear. They just kind of have a hole in their head right behind their eye. So those ear tufts even though they look like ears, they are not ears. They just guide, help guide and sound towards the facial disc. One thing you can do as we come up towards March and April, uh, and you can join um, us on these events, is you can go on an owl prowl. So we're going to be having an owl prowl on March 27th, where we can you're going to come and you can sign up and learn about Kira and our other Screech Owl Piper as well as our Barred Owl Timber and then go on the Owl Prowl where we make calls 
and see if we can elicit a response, but that's something you can also try in your own backyard. It does take some patience. But as we get into March and April, as these guys are going to be courting each other, you can you can elicit the, the sound and kind of get see if you can get a response back. Um, Debbie, what does she snack on with us? So she likes to snack on mice, so we give her little mice. She is a little owl, so she gets little mice, not big, big rats or anything like that. It's kind of up to her on how many she eats, but we might give her two or three a day. And then Liam and Claire, you want to know if she's fluffy and soft? She is pretty soft. She is a wild animal, so we don't like to put our hands directly on her because she is a little shy. Um, except for when we need to give her direct care, like we trim her nails and we trim her beak to keep them nice and proper and shaped so she can eat appropriately. But she is still a wild animal, so she sometimes is shy to human touch. But when we have touched her, her feathers are pretty soft. And she can fluff herself up pretty big. Sometimes she kind of lays all of her feathers nice and low and flat. But if she wants to make herself um, in a little bit more defensive position, if, a, if she's a little nervous, she might start to puff up her feathers. She might try to puff out her wings. So she makes herself very big. Or as big as she can. She's still pretty little. So as a quick review with our Eastern Screech Owl, remember when you are looking at birds outside, whether it's right through your window, on your porch, when you're standing in the backyard, when you're at your local park, you can look for birds anywhere. There's just four questions you want to start to ask yourself. Number one, what is the shape and size? Okay, so here we have a small owl robin size we see robins a lot in connecticut they're our state bird um, they're a good bird to reference back to for size small bird um, stocky round head square tail rounded wings okay so shape and size question number two colors we've got She's considered a red morph, but she looks pretty orange. We've got browns, blacks, and whites. Remember, they do come in a gray morph. So imagine all of that orangey color just being gray. But the black and the whites would still be there. We've got habitat, so forests, sometimes with a water feature. They'll, they can be in mixed forests, so when you have broadleaf trees and natal trees, deciduous and coniferous and behavior. They're nocturnal, making lots of noise coming up in March and April as they're courting each other. And their cavities. So look for the holes in the trees. Old woodpecker holes, old woodpecker nests, natural holes where branches have fell. That's where they're going to be hiding during the day. But remember, they're very camouflaged, so they're going to keep have a good eye. Uh, Debbie, good question. How would she normally keep her beak trimmed? So out in the wild as she's eating um, and crunching on bones um, and maybe nibbling on some harder plants like bark she's going to keep that beak and her nails trimmed in captivity remember she imprinted on people so she wasn't so sure how to care for herself out in the wild that's why she lives here with us we just have to give her an extra boost with that so we just take some nail trimmers and a dremel to her nails and beak to keep them nice and tip top good shape. So that is Kira, our eastern screech owl. When we reopen the Barnes Nature Center, make sure to come visit her but in the meantime you can visit the Barnes Nature Center trails and look out for a wild screech owl. We're going to be back 
on Thursday back on the Environmental Learning Center's a Facebook page uh, back at 10 to 1020 to do another Facebook Live. Uh, Claire, uh, one last question, if she has other owl friends she likes. Um, so Kira and our other Screech Owl Piper, they do live together in the enclosure and they get along, but they mostly leave each other alone. But we do have a larger barred owl. The larger barred owl would not be Kira's friend. The larger barred owl would want to eat Kira. So that's why they live separately. But because Piper, our other screech owl, and Kira are the same species, similar size, they can be in the same aviary. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for all the questions. And we hope you can join us back on Thursday. In the meantime, make sure to like and subscribe to the Environmental Learning Centers of Facebook, the, our Facebook page, to stay up to date on all of our upcoming programs. So we'll say goodbye to Kira. Oh, I wish she was looking at the camera. She's opening her mouth really large, almost like a yawn. And stay, stay, stay safe in the snow today. <laughs>